All right, dudes. Welcome back to the Date Detroit. This is episode number five. Thank you for joining me once again. Hopefully, I can uh, have enough breath to do this whole episode. It's going to be a little bit longer. And uh, I've just recorded. Uh, I just did the voiceover for the last two episodes. I'm doing these uh, all at once, and it's it's uh, proving quite exhausting. Anyway, today we are going to continue to work our way westward, and we are going to go through uh, Ginghamsburg, as is listed on the track plan, and into Tippecanoe City. And I love that name, Tippecanoe City. For some reason, I just think that that's so cool. Uh, so in Tippecanoe City, uh, there's supposed to be this large freight house sort of thing. Um, on the track plan, it's sort of a really complicated array of tracks, uh, along with an interchange here <clears throat> with uh, regular freight service in the back. Um, and I left this area blank from from most of the track, aside from the mainline track, specifically because the, the track plan was very complicated. The track work was very complicated, and it was going to be very dependent on what kind of building I could find to fill this void. Uh, so I picked this uh, JR building. This is uh, another one of these ones that is included uh, as the uh, downtown. Uh, no, not downtown. This is uh, one of the new industrial buildings that we have. Um, and it's a nice big facility and it's got some sort of like loading dock areas. Uh, I, I kind of like fake it a little tiny bit like uh, this track that I'm about to. Well, maybe not this one, but there's a few bays underneath that I don't think are really necessarily meant to be used for uh, for unloading areas. Um, but we're gonna use it for that purpose anyway because this one has just a whole bunch of like those areas that you could unload freight cars And that's what I liked about it, and I wanted to use it for that purpose So uh, specifically these two tracks that are about to go underneath the building here. They're kind of short maybe one box car long But enough that you know some guys could probably unload some uh, LCL type traffic uh, Freight from box cars right underneath uh, and it works. Uh, it serves its purpose. It's supposed to be a big structure with um, a couple of tracks uh, also included in here was supposed to be a balloon track, and <laughs> I uh, I really had some trouble working this in here because it, it just the space constraint was just it was impossible. I ended up just totally nixing it because uh, there's no way there was no way I was gonna be able to squeeze that in there. I'd have to totally adjust the whole thing, and uh, you know for me it just it didn't serve enough of a purpose uh, to to actually make it work. And um, given that this is supposed to be like another sort of city scene. Uh, the loop, I felt like it took up too much real estate, and I wanted to be able to put a few more buildings down, and you'll you'll see that in a moment um, once I start laying down some of the buildings. But uh, it, again, in this area, the tracks are supposed to be going up the streets, um, so I'm laying down some of these uh, these sidewalks and just trying to map out exactly how this is all going to work. Um, I made these streets a little bit more narrow than I have been doing in some of the other city areas. Um, I'm not really sure why I decided to do that, just for some variety, I guess. Uh, but there's not really a functional reason behind that, to be perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, just trying to like start big and, and work my way down from you know the, the broad brush strokes and and get to the uh, the skinnier brush strokes as I go, the more detailed things. Uh, so I had kind of an idea of how I wanted to do this, where the you know where the the track was going to come out of this. Um, what would you call it like really scenic scenes and stuff like that what we had in the in the past couple of episodes and come back into this downtown area so I wanted the track to come around this bend and and come right into this uh, right into this sort of residential I guess area like I picture these as being apartments um, so I, the, the look is pretty cool and it breaks up the scenery it breaks up the backdrop a little tiny bit um, and I just think it looks pretty nice um, some of this stuff, I really, to be perfectly honest with you, didn't really know how to fill up this space. Uh, because it, some of it was kind of cramped and certain buildings didn't seem like they fit. Like, I had a really, real big problem with, uh, I guess, the depth of this scene. Uh, I wanted to add this road here that, that went over to this freight house. Um, but these buildings were big enough that if I put the front of the building on one road, you would have the back of the building coming out on the other road. And because of the angle, which you'll see here, is I tried clipping some of them together so I could have like sort of a dual sided building. Uh, and that didn't really work. In some situations it did, and I do end up, obviously, I, I make it work. I, I figured out, spoiler, uh, I do make it work. Uh, but it was it was kind of a struggle to figure out exactly what buildings to, to put in here to still get that downtown sort of city look, um, but not have it be too, uh, like, too clipped together. Uh, and, and overlapping and, and that sort of deal. 
Um, so in order to add a little bit more depth to the scene, instead of just having the backdrop right there, right behind the tracks, I decided to add some more buildings, some more warehouses and stuff like that, that are just kind of like the facades of the buildings. They're not meant to be functional or, uh, you know, deep scenes or anything like that, or detailed scenes. They're really just there to sort of disguise the backdrop and, and trick your eye into having, you know, that the scene has a little bit more depth to it. Um, so I do add some of those, uh, some, some more warehouses back there, and I think I even did a few more off camera. Um, and in, in some cases I use the same buildings, but I just changed the height. Uh, and I found that that's a pretty good way to reuse some assets if, if you're reusing, you know, a really nice warehouse that's like four stories high, and you want to make it bigger than, than, you know, a couple tiles. Uh, lay another one right next to it, and then bury it, maybe the first floor under the, ter under the, the terrain. Uh, and hide the first or maybe first and second floors or something like that. So you get a little bit of a juxtaposition of, of heights. Uh, you have a really tall building and then a short building. Um, and it just makes it look like an even bigger building, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, uh, that's a technique that I've been using here and there when I'm repeating assets and I want to add a little bit of variety. Um, it's really hard to find new assets. Uh, you know, I talk about this all the time. Sometimes um, I feel bad that I, I end up using a lot of these same assets over and over again in some situations, but... Um, when you find really good assets that you like and, you know, some other stuff just doesn't quite meet those quality standards, you know, you, you just end up sticking with, uh, with the same stuff over and over again. So, uh, that happens, uh, it's not a big deal, but, uh, you, you know, it's good to try to mix it up, make things feel a little bit different, use them a little bit differently in different situations and stuff like that. Um, so now I'm working my way into, uh, detail mode just a little tiny bit and, uh, finally getting to some of these details that you guys had recommended to me in, uh, the first video, um, the first or second videos, uh, some, some new trucks, uh, and some other assets and stuff like that. So little by little, like I said, we'll be adding in some of these assets that you guys have recommended. Um, but I had kind of a hard time figuring out how to fill this space, sort of the same problem that I've been having in, in some of these other areas that... We've got this big wide open space and I wasn't really sure what, what kind of stuff to put there. So uh, I put a couple boxes and crates and a couple of parked trucks and stuff like that, but it still feels kind of empty. Um, maybe that's just kind of how it would be if there was just sort of a like a loading zone there. I didn't want to add a parking lot because again, um, there wasn't really enough cars that they would have like straight up uh, specific areas for parking lots. So uh, I didn't, didn't want to go that route. Kind of kept it as like an alleyway, I guess. Um, multi-use sort of uh, lot. Not a big deal to, to have, I guess. Um, and this little corner spot here, this little triangle, I wasn't really too sure what to do with. I wanted to make it feel a little bit more like a park, sort of. Um, but I don't know, it's sort of an awkward spot. Maybe you guys have some ideas and maybe I can get those ideas in here before the series is over with. But uh, I end up just sort of leaving it as it is and putting a couple park benches down, which looks great, uh, to be honest with you. I put a few be benches down and uh, a couple people sitting in these benches, like kind of looks like they're talking to each other sort of thing. Uh, and I like that effect, but it still feels a little bit sparse, a little bit empty in, in uh, certain areas. Um, so like period specific sort of thing, what would be there? I don't know, I'm not really too sure. Um, I think I tried to put a street light in there. Here's a mailbox uh, that, I th that I thought might be period, you know, specific, period worthy of that area. Uh, again, it's so hard to say what, what uh, what works and what doesn't work. Um, but if, if there's anything that's glaringly like way out of out of line, I'll, I'll definitely go back and replace it before I um, before I unleash this thing onto the download station or whatever's gonna happen with it. I don't really I haven't haven't really decided. I don't know what I'm what I'm gonna do. Um, but here I'm just trying to use a little bit of different textures. I wanted to uh, maybe use some different cobblestone. A lot of the streets back then were cobblestone. The asphalt and pavement wasn't really uh, prevalent back then. So I wanted to integrate a lot of that cobblestone stuff. And some areas, once asphalt did sort of come into use, would just be paved right over. So you'd have areas where uh, it was kind of mixed with asphalt covering up old cobblestone and the cobblestone would kind of peek through. Uh, so I wanted to integrate that kind of uh, that kind of an idea. And uh, it works out pretty well if you do it right. Uh, so yeah, so here was my solution to the balloon track and the interchange. I got rid of that balloon track as you saw previously. Um, but we still needed to have an interchange with the electric railway with um, whatever the mainline traffic is supposed to be. It says Western Ohio staging, Springfield, Troy, and Pequ Pequa staging uh, is, is sort of like uh, down the line a little tiny bit. I'm not sure. I have to do a little bit of research and see what 
uh, engines are supposed to be operating through here. But it does say steam engines, steam locomotives, so uh, we will have some steam engines running through here and interchanging with this electric railway. And uh, I think that this works pretty well. Um, it's not anything too fancy. It's not a it's not a big balloon track or anything like that, but uh, it, it does the job and uh, it allows the, the trains to interchange with each other, which is what the function of this was supposed to be. Um, and it does allow us to get a glimpse at this uh, really annoying track that has just been kind of plaguing the perimeter of, of this whole layout the entire time. And I, I keep just pushing it off behind the backdrop because there's no way to, no good way to bring it into the, the scene so far. Uh, but this is it. This is that track that, that I've been kind of like pushing away for a little while. Uh, and again, just trying to work in some of these uh, scenery assets, some grasses uh, and, uh, and shrubs and stuff like that. Um, this area here, it, uh, let me look at the thing here. Uh, Ging, what is the name of this? What did I say it was? Ginghamsburg? Kind of a strange name. Uh, it didn't really show anything on this track plane here. It was just mostly more uh, countryside sort of scenes, uh, which is pretty much what I stuck with. Just laying out some grass and, uh, and some shrubs and trees and stuff like that. And uh, in this area, I decided to use some of this, uh, the grass splines. Uh, what's nice about grass splines is that you can put them on hillsides and they'll conform to the terrain uh, until you like fix the asset height. Um, so you'll, if you're on a hill, you won't have anything kind of like floating or anything like that. Uh, whereas if you're going to place a regular grass asset uh, that is not a spline, you would have to adjust the height uh, so that you don't have any floating points or buried points or anything like that. Uh, so I really usually don't use grass splines too frequently just because they get a little repetitive. Uh, and you'll see as I zoom in and zoom out, the levels of detail kind of like pop in and pop out. So it kind of it kind of kills it for me a little tiny bit to see it sort of generate, you know, before my eyes, sort of so to speak. Um, uh, but it does it does cover ground really nicely, and uh, it especially works really well on hillsides and stuff like that. So uh, that's something to keep in mind is kind of use those spline assets uh, appropriately when you need to. Uh, and here, what I was trying to do was add a little bit of height to the, the track bed. I wanted it to feel raised above the rest of the terrain. Um, so I'm kind of lowering the terrain around it and uh, bringing the terrain underneath the track back up, uh, which works kind of. Uh, this area is just so narrow that the effect isn't like super, uh, super obvious, but it's there. Uh, and then adding in some of these wildflowers, which I think are beautiful, just like a nice touch to uh, kind of break up an otherwise really bland scene, uh, really bland, repetitive scene. Um, so I, I think that works. Um, another thing I'm doing here is uh, trying to break up those spline points uh, to break that repetitiveness that you do get with splines. Uh, so uh, you can break them up a little tiny bit, put a, you know, I forget what you call it, like delete sections of it and then add some regular grass assets there uh, to sort of blend it a little tiny bit, a little bit differently. Uh, and here is a really great asset, these planters, I can't remember what the name of it is, but you should go back, pause the video, and look in the bottom right corner at the, the KUID, and download these planters, because they are so nice. They are so beautiful, I used them on Union Terminal, and I used them on the Drybrook route, and they just are perfect. So, uh, I wanted to spruce up this, uh, this main street just a little tiny bit, add some more details. Uh, and that's something that came to mind was just adding some of these planters and some some nice beautiful trees And I think it's important to remember that you know today if you go down the same street these trees would be huge um, But back then almost a hundred years ago now They were small baby trees. This is when they were planted So I didn't want to put any gargantuan trees there because this was all new stuff. These were all freshly planted trees um, uh, So going through here again adding some more people and just trying to spruce up some of the scenes a little tiny bit um, and one thing that I need to address and figure out what I'm going to do with is the the area of this main street that is closest that is going to be closest to the fascia. Uh, so if you look to the right of the camera, there's the sidewalk, and then there's nothing there. There's no buildings there. And I've been really tempted to put buildings there, but we'd be looking at the back of the buildings for one, and for two, it would obstruct our view of the tracks that are going down the middle of the road. Uh, so I don't really know how I'm going to solve that problem. Um, I'll, I, I really don't know. It's I probably won't figure it out until I start getting in here and cutting out the dig holes and cutting out the fascia, uh, or adding the fascia and, and all that kind of stuff, and sort of the model railroad room part of this video build, or whatever you would call it. Uh, I think that that's probably when I'll figure it out. 
Uh, at this point, uh, the, some of the final details I'm adding here are just some gas lanterns, gas lamps, and uh, putting them around the street. And that's going to bring us right into the cinematics here. So, uh, with that in mind, please leave a like on this video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Once we hit 5,000 subscribers here, I will do a giveaway, so keep that in mind. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time in episode number six.